Hey everybody, I'm Jan Scott. Welcome to our uh, one of our Christmas TV specials. How you doing? Uh, it is what's today's date? It's the um, it's before Christmas, at least two weeks. And you know what we're going to do today? Um, later on in the show, we're going to talk about some of uh, my favorite charities and yours. Uh, we'll let you call in about that. Um, that'll be for the second second half of the program. But we have somebody with us actually who represents um, and, and an organization that actually represents um, uh, Boulder's sense of caring and giving all year round, but especially at Christmas. And it's uh, emergency uh, family assistance. They're over at Ninth and and uh, Rapaho and Terry Benjamin. The executive director since 1980 is here with us. Thanks for coming by. A pleasure. Thanks for all. On your own time, dropping all in the here own time. On, on the TV show. Emergency family assistance. I mean, a lot of people. I, I know about it. I used it back in the 80s when I was poor. Go down there and get a box of food. Right. You know, when you run out of food. And you're, right. When I first started doing um, uh, a radio show called Addiction Free Radio on this TV show, we always never had enough money to eat with and I'd have to run down there yeah. and get a box of food and get an emergency food stamp <laughs> appointment and right. you know, that, that kind of right. stuff. So, right. um, uh, and one of the things was you really got taken care of because if you are out of food and you are hungry this time of the year, you can walk through the door and leave there with a box of food. You get it. I mean, I think that's that's one of the unique aspects of the organization is, is we really do try to provide immediate assistance for people. You know, in some ways you can think of it as an emergency room at a hospital. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have a lot of time to mess around with the problems at, time, at that time. So we really try to respond to what's going on for people right then. You're right over there at 9th and uh, Arapaho in yeah. the old Second Baptist Church. The, the old Second Baptist Church, yeah. Which met only on, on uh, Saturdays. Saturdays. Because I used to go to that church. Oh, did you? Yeah, that's sure. That's a guess. That's a guess. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, we bought that about 15 years ago. Yeah. The city of Boulder helped us yeah. there, and the, we did a capital campaign and got it completely paid for with no yep. debt. And so one of the neat things that happened is that the congregation uh, was kind of mm -hmm. concerned about what was going to happen with the building. Oh, yeah. And they had restaurants and bars that were after them, and they oh, weren't boy. real happy about that because yeah. they're a fairly conservative group of people. Yeah. And we had, uh, so they were happy when they saw what the use was going to be. And we had a little open house farm after we did our remodel. Oh, yeah. And people came in that I thought were kind of extinct in Boulder. I live in right. Longmont, uh -huh. and you still see people out there sure. wearing coveralls. Oh, so sure. income folks to visit yeah. the place and check it out that were basically born into the church. Right. And so it was a real kind of honor and a gift to kind of translate that use into what we do that in some ways people say is God's, still God's work. Well, it so. seems to be. Probably the good Lord is... Um, 
His praise probably happier than ever. He says, that's, <laughs> that's what I wanted to see happen you know, at my we, church. We, feed the poor. You feed the poor. Right? And, and angels hover around us, believe me. I was talking to staff people today. And, you know, uh -huh. we're trying to upgrade our uh, information systems, our technology. And nonprofits are always a little bit behind the curve mm -hmm. of the, uh, the for-profit sector. So, you know, all of a sudden people start showing up to volunteer and do services for us in a, in a very inexpensive what? fashion. What what do you do? What's what? To, I mean, what what's the what's the how does no, the I how think, does the whole place work? I think if you kind of boil it down to the core, mm -hmm. I mean, and, and we really talk about a vision of building a more caring community mm -hmm. for families in crisis, and kind of within that broader vision, we focus on meeting people's basic needs: food, shelter, clothing, mm -hmm. on a short-term basis, mm -hmm. uh, when they really can't get those needs met other ways. Uh, we work throughout Boulder County. Um, and we operate a series of fairly comprehensive programs throughout the county to help out with those kind of needs. Yeah, and, and so how many facilities do you have? I think there are eight locations throughout the county. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of starting in Longmont, we have 12 units of housing out there we own and operate as an emergency shelter for families in Longmont. We have 12 units in Lafayette we purchased about mm -hmm. Oh, two years ago now, and mm -hmm. that's shelter for families. We have about eight, about uh, 18 units in Boulder that we operate as shelters, and then we have our basic needs program and, and furniture bank in Boulder. So, you know, it's a, it's a fairly large physical plant that we have now. So a family comes, they're situationally homeless, they don't yep. have a place to live. Yep. We what? sit down and have a caseworker interview mm -hmm. them, mm -hmm. and I hope when you went, you felt like you were treated kindly. Oh man, it's a great place because yeah. you know it's pretty hard. It's pretty if you're, hard if you're a person who's fairly educated, been doing pretty well you your whole it. life, and you, you end it. up in a situation you're like, geez, you know, you're you sleeping on somebody's couch and you have nothing to eat and you're not and no money. Yep. And so we can't mm -hmm. solve everybody's financial problem, no. but we really shoot for kind of treating people with respect and mm -hmm. help them hang on to dignity during a tough time. So to get back to your question, you know, we'll sit down in a caring way, talk about what's going on, what mm -hmm. kind of plans you have for the future, mm -hmm. and if you'll uh, uh, participate in the program that we offer, because it's not just a quote-unquote free ride. If you mm -hmm. go into our shelter, you have to agree to uh, abide by house rules that are mm -hmm. fairly simple and not mm -hmm. asking too much. But you also have to agree to work with our casework staff to kind of get back on your feet. You can find a job, be out either working or yeah, looking for yeah, work. Or and it's gotten tougher, as you said. I've been there a long time. Mm -hmm. And now people come to the shelter, they're already working. When did you start there? 1980. How long, a long time ago. How long has this place been going? Uh, you know, it's been going a long time. Some people think I've been there since the beginning, but yeah. it started about 1918. 1918. 1918. At the end of the big war, the year of the big flu epidemic that about killed uh, that, two million that's Americans. That's right. I was reading that in the paper the other day. But we, uh, kind of the roots go back to a time in the community's history when uh, you know, the economy in Boulder was essentially uh, the center of trade and commerce mm -hmm. for the mining towns. Yeah. And the mining industry went belly up. And so essentially there was a local depression and there weren't any federal or state programs mm -hmm. um, to help people. Right. So the community through the faith community and the business community came together to start a neighbor to neighbor helping program focused mm -hmm. on basic needs and getting people back on their feet. Right. And basically, you know, the town's changed and we've grown at EFA, but our mission and our vision of really getting the community involved and helping other people in the community who need help really hadn't shifted mm -hmm. this much. Who, who, so how do you, how, how much money, well, how, like how, how much money do you spend? How big are you? How much, yeah. how much do you give away? Yeah. What, what, how does all How's that, that work? work? The financial yeah. side of things. Yeah. You know, I guess at a, at a general level, what we really are proud of and really stay focused mm -hmm. on from a kind of value or philosophical framework is we want to be locally owned and operated. Uh -huh. So local support is what kind of feeds our soul right. and pr helps pay the bills and provide services. Right. So kind of taking that down another level is we get local government funding. The city of Boulder's been good to us over the years. So they give you? They, uh, on their annual, kind of our annual budget, they give us about $100,000 a year. Mm -hmm. It has dropped, I've got to say, a little bit with the city's budget crisis, mm -hmm. yep. and so we hope that the passage of 202 helps EFA and other nonprofits kind right. of get back in the game a little bit. Uh, but they also help us a lot with capital dollars mm -hmm. to help fund shelter programs, uh, you know, that we need to purchase mm -hmm. or improve, and they've been really great to us over the well, years on that. With that too, yeah. So the city of Boulder, Boulder mm -hmm. County, funds us as well. How much do you get from that? Uh, we have two sources of funding from the county. I want to say a combined of about $150,000. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, they contract with us, for example, to put families that go to social services and need shelter. Yeah. They have a contract with our services to your, put people in Your total in budget for the year? Yeah, about $2 million $2 cash. $2 million? Yeah. So where do you, I mean, that's only that's only 300000 Where do you get the rest of it? Yep. Well, United Way is oh, a yeah. nice part. Mm -hmm. That's about $80,000. But okay. the rest yep. comes from the community. Comes from, comes from viewers? Individuals. Comes from the 35,000 people that are watching this show tonight. You got it. And yep. if uh, they uh -huh. haven't sent in their check yet, please mm -hmm. do so today, as we really need uh, the check. You do? <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. Oh, yeah. This is our fundraising season. It's kind of to talk about mm -hmm. that for a second. Sure. If you look at how our income stream works, uh -huh. it, it looks kind of like this. Mm -hmm. You know, in December oh. is a month we raise, you know, we expect to raise about $270,000. Well, now, I so. get an envelope from you, so you three or four times a year. How you often bet. do you send those out? About three or four times a year. <laughs> so I always, I always write a check, not a big one, a small one. That's good. One. That's good. I mean, how many of those do you send out every year? Well, our individual donor base, we mm -hmm. have about 3,000 different people make donations to us each year. Three or 4,000 people? Uh, well, three, mm -hmm. about 3,000 people. Mm -hmm. We yeah. have maybe six or 700 businesses. We have foundations throughout the community mm -hmm. and down oh, in yeah. Denver that support okay. us. So we probably have in the private donation side around, I'd say three, three maybe 4,000, uh, mm -hmm. about 4,000 gifts, uh, givers a year from those different yeah, sources. I mean, EFA, EFA is just quite the organization. It's, I, it's, I, it's, it's, it's my most, it is my most favorite. Well, thank you. In, oh, in Boulder. That. I mean, if you have that. favorites, I mean, you know, the homeless shelter does good work and That's other all. places do good work, but you guys deal with the nuts and bolts. I mean, I have people come up to me and they go, come on, Jim, Boulder's a rich kid's city. You know, yeah. there's no people. The people um, never go hungry here. I mean, right. this, that's not the, not true. I mean, every, there's more. This is the most loving, giving, caring community in the world. Are there kids that go without eating? You in bet. This oh, you bet. Yeah, without eating, without a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. You know, doubled up in uh, terribly inadequate circumstances, mm -hmm. and that's a part of the community. Kids without enough food. Oh, you bet. You bet, yeah, definitely. I mean, Community Food Share is an expert in this area, and they're mm -hmm. trying to ramp up their uh, program over there. To, no, I to thought everybody them. was was no. middle class, rich, and white in our town, yeah. and every no everybody's eating well. Well, I'm here to help you understand it's a little different. Well, <laughs> so but no. I don't think no. I don't think so. I don't is, think my viewers yeah buy this buy because because yeah. we go to school and we see everybody everybody looks really yeah. Go ahead. What we have about uh, during the course of the year about three thousand different families will come mm -hmm. to this little office at Ninth and Arapaho. And so what we do, in addition to meeting mm -hmm. these needs, yep. is get people involved in the helping process, yeah. and that changes their perception of things. Let me tell oh. you a quick little story, if okay. we're okay. Right. You know, uh, the other end of this building the other night, the Community Foundation had a reception, mm -hmm. uh, an awards ceremony for, uh, associated with their Culture of Giving program, right. if you're aware of that, uh, that's trying to increase philanthropy throughout the community. And they held kind of an art contest for mm -hmm. middle and high school students. And the winners received different amounts of money. First place, $500. But they had to give away half of their money. Mm -hmm. The winner in the uh, middle school category picked Effa. Oh, yeah. And when she was asked why she chose Effa, mm -hmm. she said, because my family and I went down and volunteered in the food bank. And mm -hmm. I saw how great the needs were in this community. So part of our job is to help the community understand that these needs exist, mm -hmm. they are very real, they are growing, and well, there are things we can do together to help out. Okay, the, the idea that there would be a family at around Christmas, yeah. now I know this yeah. myself personally yeah. because I, you know, in my neighborhood there are families who have kids that sometimes run out of heat in the dead of winter. Yep. That case in point where we had a family didn't have the furnace, the furnace broke, the landlord was out of town, mom was so upset and so ashamed that she didn't want to call the landlord to get the furnace fixed. Meanwhile, it's as cold as it is outside. Right. Christmas Day, I go over to bring a few things and the furnace has been off for three days and everybody's freezing and there's not enough to eat. Right. So, and that has not, I haven't seen that not just once in our community, our beloved Shangri-La under the flat irons right. more than once. Right. You must, you probably, have you personally witnessed things like this? Oh, yeah. Oh, all yeah. the time. I mean, that stuff goes on every day. See, I don't, I, don't think, I don't think they get it. Seniors. We're all sitting home comfortable yeah. in our yeah. nice houses, yeah. you know, in the yeah. warmth of our homes, yeah. watching television. Yeah. 
Well, hopefully more people will get it after tonight, I guess is what I would say. But it, that's our job, is to educate the community what have about you seen? needs. What, what, what are you seeing on a daily basis? Well, I think what's happened in the last, if I think back uh, in my mind. I want you to put, I want you to put a, I want you to put a face on this. Yeah. I want a story. Yeah. Uh, we want to, tell us about somebody that we've Our family recently. recently. Yeah. yeah. We know we, uh, as I said, opened this shelter in, La in Lafayette. Let me okay. just tell you the story there, you know, because we had her involved. We had a little open house, and mm -hmm. the county and state and local officials came. And so she got up, and it's hard for people to tell their stories. Like right. you say, it's an yeah. embarrassing thing. And she was a single mom, you know, who had been in, um, you know, a real tough situation in, mm -hmm. in her marriage and left it. Yeah. Uh, had some problems with alcohol herself mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and basically hit the bottom. Mm -hmm. And she ended up with her parents saying, we're not going to do any more for you. But she's got mm -hmm. these two little ones. Mm -hmm. So she gets to our shop. Mm -hmm. She gets into our shelter program, Echo House. Right. Right. And she works hard at what she's doing, so we kind of had her move on into what we call transitional housing, which is a longer stay for people, and ends up getting an education and doing fine. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, women that are just struggling with mm -hmm. lots of kids, you know, um, people that had been hit by the recession um, have been really kind of coming to us in droves. Our caseloads, Jan, have gone up 40% in the last couple of years. And people have, they, they, their, their mental health kind of goes downhill when this happens, huh? Well, Moms get do. under stress yeah. and they don't do really well. Yeah, yeah, I think I read somewhere a long time ago that one, the one thing families or parents argue most about is money. And you know, if it That's were you or I, yeah. and you know, we're kicked in the street or whatever, we probably yeah. can survive. We can go to a shelter, we can yeah. find a job, yeah. we can do something. Yeah. But when your children, yeah. When you have a family yeah. that doesn't have enough to eat yeah. or a, a warm yeah. place to sleep yeah. around Christmas. It's brutal. It's, it's not good. And it's not just Christmas, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, this is okay. the time of year this issue comes up for mm -hmm. us. Uh, but it's going to be, I mean, you know, if you've kind of been reading the papers, you mm -hmm. see what public service bills are going to do this year. Yeah. 73 percent increases. You pay public service bills oh, for some people? Yeah. Yep. And we work with the foundation out of uh, Denver that helps support that. Colorado Energy Assistance mm -hmm. Foundation, and they would give us a grant, but we expect not at Christmas, mm -hmm. but January, February, March, April, to really have major problems with the number of people coming oh in needing help for that. Mm -hmm. So this time of year, when kind of the charitable instinct comes to the surface, is when we raise the money to carry us through those leaner months when the dollars don't come in as much. But it's a year-round mm -hmm. problem here that we try to deal with. Do you ever with. run out of food down there? We got thin before. We've never gone completely mm -hmm. out. But the last couple of years, with needs mm -hmm. going up so much, we've um, come very, very thin at times, lower than we want to be. And that's one of the things viewers can do. You know, we're trying to get groups to organize to do sizable food drives for mm -hmm. us. We work with the faith community. Uh, who do food drives for us mm -hmm. throughout the year. Community Food Share works a lot with us. The schools right now, uh, many, many schools throughout Boulder mm -hmm. are doing food drives and bringing food to us. So we have those systems organized mm -hmm. to keep food coming in, but we need more groups to join in and help with that effort. Mm -hmm. what, uh, also cars. You, um, there, you were talking yeah. about some, some, of, some nonprofits say, sell us your, give us your car, we'll, we'll sell, sell it, we'll take the money. What do you guys right. do? We get serviceable cars, and we've been doing this for years. Mm -hmm. Somebody has a car, they're going to buy new, and they have a good one that you know, doesn't need repairs. They contact us, they donate the car to us, get a deduction, mm -hmm. and we match it up with somebody in the community that really needs it in order to keep a job, stay in school. Oh, yeah. and they might be a client of Project Self-Sufficiency or Safe House, mm -hmm. but we do that kind of matchmaking. Now, so, I like that. So yeah. if you have a car, give it to EFA. They're not going to sell it. They're going to they're going to put somebody in it who needs it maybe to get to a job or to yep. to, to get to school get to the kids yep. to school yep. something shopping yep. cars important transportation you yeah know, transportation as you right. get a single mom with two or three mm -hmm. kids different ages and they can't the buses are just kind of don't work for them you have and you also have a furniture program yep we take <laughs> uh, you know uh, good serviceable basic mm -hmm. furniture items. Um, you know, it, uh, we have somebody who uh, works a small uh, part-time job, mm -hmm. uh, works 15 hours a week, and we work with volunteers, and people call our office, and we arrange to make pickups. It usually takes a few days to do that because it's a part-time job, and we take those 
furniture items to a warehouse, oh, yeah. and we then give them. We don't charge. It's not mm -hmm. a thrift store. We give them to people who have come now, in I and like their this. needs. See, I like this. I don't think if you're going to give furniture away, don't give it to somebody who's going to charge somebody who's poor. Let's you pass it on through. Like, what is it they do, they do over there at First Presbyterian on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 10.30 every day? They have the... They have a clothing bank over there. The clothing there. bank. Yep. You can go in and get a bag of clothes yep. per person. Yep. For free. For free. Not You don't go over to the, whatever it is, yeah. Aries or something, and they yeah. charge you. I mean, if you're poor, you can't afford that. You, yeah. And, and we, the churches we'll, should be doing that. And God will not like it if when you <laughs> go to heaven and he finds out that you have been holding out or making money on the poor, and those of you who are rich, <laughs> you have not been giving enough. <laughs> don't put that sign up either. Yeah. Yeah. We have a sign for the rich. We're going to do it later. <laughs> So no, the, the rich do not give enough in this town, do they? This well, per capita, we give less yeah, than any other community yeah. in the state of Colorado. And I think that's what the Culture of Giving project is going towards, you is know. It? Yeah, it's trying to kind of ratchet up the level of giving for the entire community, for all hey, nonprofits. Hey, if I, all the charities that come through in yeah. the mail to me, yeah. I mean, Homeless Shelter, EFA, um, you know everything. You know, there's you can, an you arts can, oh, you, community. You can give a dollar. You can write. You can write a check for okay. Ten charities, five dollars. That's fifty bucks. Or two fifty. There's ten. That's twenty five dollars. Yeah. If you had three or four or ten thousand people yeah. giving two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. There's two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. It's a. You don't have to give a lot. It's not. Just it's, but you need to get. You need to get the checkbook out. It's, it, We're having a talk now. Go ahead. Sir. Or, you know, yeah. I mean, we make it yep. real easy. You can go on our website, make I a know. donation there, you know, with a credit card. And, you know, I think one of the things that uh, a lot of nonprofits are doing is just trying to give donors many different avenues to give that are very easy. And, you know, having 10 bucks a month taken out of your checking account automatically, you know, automatic yeah. withdrawal and okay, stuff like that. If they that. can do $10, but even if they oh even, even a dollar, right? Well, yeah, I don't I know mean, what the cost of benefit lot, is, what the fees are. But, I mean, it doesn't have to be much, is your point, to make a big difference. Yeah. For 100 and 120 bucks, mm -hmm. you know, we can help somebody, uh, you know, pay, sure. their, pay their rent for part of a month, mm -hmm. you know. So, it, it, a little bit and you guys from a do lot good, of people goes a You do a long good way. work. You're, not, you're helping you. people get back up on their feet. It's kind of a hand, a hand up, not a hand out kind of philosophy, right? Yeah. In a way, I mean. Yeah. It's a both and, I both, guess, yeah. is what I'd sure. say. Because most people mm -hmm. want to be on their feet. Right. And so, you don't need necessarily to spend a lot of time kind of working them over, so to speak. You just, a little, a little gift <laughs> right. can go a long yeah. way, and down the road they go. What, can I ask you, now sure. you, how many people work there? Work at, at, at we have about 19 employees, oh. and about 12 of them are full-time, and the rest are part-time. And again, scattered mm -hmm. throughout Boulder County. What do they County. do? Well, I mean, you got me trying to keep the place going down the road in some yep. kind of organized fashion. And you, and your, your background is what? Social work. What I've got it? my master's in social work in '75, okay. I think it is. Been a while ago now, but so you, uh, spend pl you, you have spent plenty of time in the trenches with people. We have spent yeah. a lot of time in the trenches with people, and so we have, you know, a development director to help us raise money and an mm -hmm. assistant for her, and but most of the staff or in the program side of things. We try to keep administrative costs low and get our dollars where the rubber meets the road. And so we have about eight or nine caseworkers mm -hmm. that sit down and work with people real directly. And a host of volunteers. i got to kind of plug the volunteers. It's a mm -hmm. one heck of a volunteer program. Right. And volunteers play very meaningful roles down there for us right mm -hmm. now. They mm -hmm. um, do interviews with people who come in and need help with food, you know, a little gas for their car mm -hmm. to get to and from work until they get a paycheck things like that, volunteer see. Mm -hmm. And our caseworkers then work with people who are really kind of having, you know, I need 800 bucks by tomorrow, my kids and I are on the street. That we have a caseworker sit down and work with them because they're looking mm -hmm. at their budget in depth, they're looking at some plans around the money side of things, they're mm -hmm. looking at other resources in the community that they can draw mm -hmm. upon, they're looking at what they can do for themselves. Yeah. So we have a real, real efficient operation because we do rely so much on volunteers for key tasks. Oh, and you, say, and you take in about two, what you say, two and a half million a year? About two million a year, roughly. And some of it's in kind, some of it's About cash. half a million in kind. Food, cars, mm -hmm. we get some rent donated, things mm -hmm. like that. Oh, really? So people will donate the rent or they'll donate the apartments or what? Uh, well, we, ha we have mm -hmm. some of that going on, but mostly mm -hmm. it's an in kind donation really from the city of Boulder for one mm -hmm. of our shelters that they give to us oh, rent free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, and, and, and how, much, how much of what you take in 
goes to services to people? Well, you know, the only, what's the administrative percentage? Okay, and yeah. It's around 13% for us. 13, that's mm -hmm. it? Mm -hmm. Which is pretty good. That's I mean, we're really low. It. I yeah. think we dropped it a little bit from last year to this Did year, Did you say 13%? Yeah. That's yeah. lower than Salvation Army's. There's a 17%. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we run 13. 13%? Yeah, 13.6, yeah. something like that. Yeah, pretty good. That's really good. Yeah. So we feel proud about that, and because again, so much of this stuff, I just can't tell you how much work of the organization gets done through in-kind donations mm -hmm. and volunteer, uh, volunteers. It's a, it's a magical thing, and quite honestly, it's the thing I feel best about. When I think I, when I started there in 1980, I think we had one volunteer. So you, and you now I can't even count them all. Is that right? Yeah. So you have a lot of volunteers. A okay. lot of volunteers. All right. Lots of important roles. Well, it's, it's, it's good. To, I don't know how people can view. They can go on your website, right? Yeah, check us out. We, you know, and that's one of the things in terms of efficiency. Mm -hmm. you know, we're trying to get people to sign up to get our newsletter. We send out about 8,000 newsletters each year throughout oh, yeah. the county to people. We, the more we can get of those going electronically, the less mm -hmm. paper and postage we have to buy. Oh, that's good. The more giving that can get, uh, come electronically, mm -hmm. you know, the less mailings we have to do. So we're really strategically trying to focus in this technologically savvy community using our web and encourage people to go in there, check our annual report out, see what the numbers are, finances are, programs are, and it's a real simple web address. It's just www.efaa.org. That's, so right. that's the most efficient way for people to kind of learn more about us. There are volunteer opportunities in there. There's a lot about the organization. Yep. All right. Do you have any specific needs right now? No, it's, you know, it's fundraising same season. Same, same, yeah. same, you know, keep those cards and letters coming in. The cash yep. donations that we receive now will carry us through July, August, September, October yep. next year. Uh, I think if, if there's a, a, you know, large food drives that people want to organize for us mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the slow seasons, mm -hmm. you know, this time of year a lot of food's coming in. Yeah. The schools, food shares, When's food the drive. slow season when you need stuff and you're not Probably coming. starting April, May, June. Oh, really? I'd have to look at a yeah. calendar. But we try to manage that inflow yep. of food just like we do cash. So yep. people can contact us and they can email me if they want to. You know, it's mm -hmm. uh, terry at effa.org and we'll get them hooked up with somebody who can give them that information. So food drive cars, volunteers, mm -hmm. you know, and obviously the cash donations that kind of fuel the fires for the whole year. Well, thank you, Terry. Terry hey. Benjamin, with the, he's the uh, executive director of EFA. Thank you so much for coming by. Hey, thank you for it. the uh, thank you for all the good work that you folks do down there. It's really There's a lot of people I know that yeah. um, it's the uh, real. You are the emergency room. You are the you're you're on the you're on the cutting edge. You you're the you're the point you're the point point people the point man yep. for um, hunger in in really a bad situation when it hits a family. You're the place they go. You're, right. you're the place they're going to get immediate help right now, tonight, yeah. kind of, well, I mean, or tomorrow morning kind of thing. And to the extent yeah. we mm -hmm. have the resources, because that's the frustrating yeah, yeah. part for us. Oh, I see. The needs are here, resources yeah. are here, and so that's why we appeal to the community to oh, kind of yeah. keep those cards and letters, because there are a lot of needs the caseworkers would say. Do you, do you have enough houses, enough enough homes for no, people? Are you turning families away? Yep, and uh, one of the things we're doing real quick with the uh, Boulder County Home Builders Association, mm -hmm. again, how the money works is, uh, we're buying a piece of land up in North Boulder, and the Home Builders Association, through a program they call Home Aid, right. is going to come in and basically mobilize their suppliers and contractors to build it for us. Oh, I see. So we're going to get well, three two-bedroom units, nice mm -hmm. three two-bedroom units, built for about $50,000 each cash. And in the city of Boulder, getting a housing unit for fifty grand. Mm -hmm is pretty remarkable. That's that's really pretty and good. And so that's again that community involvement through the Boulder County Home Builders Association in this instance. Thank you, Terry. Hey, thanks, it's thanks been for a, coming by. Been an honor. All right, thanks, you gotta Jen. Take that mic off before, Great. before you leave. All right, that's uh, Terry Benjamin, um, the executive director with uh, uh, Emergency Family um, Assistance Association. They're down on their main headquarters, of course, Ninth and um, Arapahoe. Um, in a great organization. Thanks. You, yeah, you can leave if you want to. We're we're done. You can just walk right off the set. Yeah. Yep. Wow. There you go. Now that you know, th there's an organization. I mean, I know I can go on about this forever, but there's an organization that really uh, does uh, a pretty good job. I mean, they they help people so much. And you know, and unless you've seen uh, kids, our kids, in our town. Um, 
not doing well. Thank you. A little water for me. No, no. How, how about just plain water would be good. Uh, thank you so much, Keith. And keep your finger on it. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it, very, very important. And 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 those of you who have who have money, you know, you need to give it. The word is out that you guys are not giving enough money in our town. You know, the per and Terry was kind of being diplomatic about it, but I'm not going to be so diplomatic about it. You are not giving enough money. You, some of you are rich, and you're very, very stingy. And you are, um, you are not giving enough money to the charities that need it. And that's bad. It's very bad. In fact, I would say, I would say that some of you are rich. No, we don't put those things up until I call for them. Okay. Um, some of you are rich, stingy bastards. That's right. Uh, see, I was setting it up to get to that point, but I'll call for it, and then you put it up. Um, uh, yeah, not good. There are a lot of you sitting back with millions or hundreds of thousands, you know, and you're not even donating $5 to a charity. Forget about $120, like what Terry was talking about. You're not even donating, like, 5 bucks, and you should be doing that. You know the old story about, um, what is it? A camel has a easier job of getting through the eye of a needle than a rich man has getting into heaven. That's what it's all about. Now, what if that's true? What if you were to, like, die, and then you go to heaven and you find out, oh, oh God, there is a God. And he says, ha, you have a lot of money and a big house, and how much did you give to the poor? Oh, nothing? <laughs> we have a nice warm place for you. What if you found out that you couldn't get through the pearly gates? And that story was true. Well, what then? Huh? Think about it. Be a selfish prick that you are. Write a check to your favorite charity. How about some Christmas music? What are some of the songs that we have on there, Jen? Um, the Christmas song? Yeah, Christmas songs. No, there is the Christmas song. Let's hear. Let's hear a couple. Let's start. This is a, what's the name of this album? The Ultimate Christmas. Okay. Here we go. Let's uh, put them on and let's talk about some of the songs that are coming up. Okay. It's a nice Christmas album for you guys. <laughs> Speaking of charities, just like ones I used to know. <laughs> Speaking of the White the Christmas, there is um, there's another charity that I'd recommend that you do not give money to. And this one is the um, It's the Ku Klux Klan. <laughs> this is their theme song. Where is it? This song. Okay, then there's, uh, there's, of course, the Ku Klux Klan. You know, there's another EFA. Um, this is a, this EFA wa is, was, let me see, where the hell did I put this stuff? Oh, here they are. Sorry. Yeah, the Ku Klux Klan. That's poisoning the web with hatred online. <laughs> there's the old Ku Klux Klan site. 
like uh, other white supremacist groups, the Klan has turned the internet into a means to revitalize their movement to attract a cadre of supporters and activists. No. And then there's the other EFA. And the other EFA is, um, does anybody know what it is? 440-3572, the talk line. EFA Manley, who was EFA Manley? Does anybody know? 440-3572, EFA Manley. That would not be emergency family uh, assistance, it's EFA Manley. Well, I'll tell you. EFA Manley. She was the owner and manager of one of the Negro League's teams. That's right. The Newark Eagles. EFA uh, was the owner of the uh, Negro team, the Newark Eagles. Not like emergency family assistance here in Boulder. Different. All right. Other favorite charities. All right. This, this one right here. CATV Channel 54. ComTV.org. Uh, a lot goes on here. Uh, there are so many producers. This place is so busy. People are trying so hard to get in here and get out the uh, word of free speech and do programs like this that CATV, of course, the city took it out of the budget and created a huge damn mess and um, practically collapsed the place. This is the, uh, this is the underpinnings of the Dairy Center for Performing Arts. You know, incidentally, if CATV goes down and leaves this building, the entire Dairy Center, all of those rich people that bring their children down here to dance and everything, you can say goodbye to the Dairy Center because if CATV goes, the Dairy Center collapses because we pay the bulk of the rent that keeps this place propped up. No one was thinking about that, were they, when they decided to pull the CATV budget. So you can support CATV. That's one of my favorite charities, comtv.org. You can just go on the internet. Get your computer out and your laptop, as I have some great sites for you to go to today. So there's the uh, Ku Klux Klan. They have their own damn site up. They're crazier than hell. Bunch of crazy bastards. Uh, Boulder County Cares. Um, Boulder County Cares helps in three ways. This is the homeless shelter. Uh, let's see. Boulder County Cares operates during the winter, October through April 30th, 6 p.m. to 10 p.m. Uh, you see a homeless person in need during these hours, please call us on our cell phone. We can usually respond within 10 minutes. Now, you know, before Boulder County Cares went out and picked up homeless people, we did that with the uh, Jan Scott Tonight um, uh, white uh, Bronco. Used to go out and pick up homeless people and uh, take them either to the shelter or to the jail. And then finally George Epps saw us out there one night and said, what are you doing on these snowy nights? I said, we're picking up homeless people and taking them to the shelter. So Epp donated a white van or a Jeep to the um, uh, shelter and then the CARES was, was created. So this is a good thing to do right here. Um, they also need sleeping bags, blankets, socks, tarps, prepackaged food, gloves, and winter clothing. These are for, there's a lot of guys that don't like to go to the shelter. They are chronic, um, uh, mentally disabled, or alcoholic, or drug addicted. And um, the only people that go out and see them under the bridges in the snow or in cold nights like this, passing out blankets, uh, 6 to 10 p.m., there's a, they're out there. You'll see them in their little Jeep, and they'll open up the tailgate and have some coffee and tea and try to give some of the guys hot food. Some people are so paranoid or so ill mentally or with alcohol or drugs that they, um, are in, they, they just won't go to the shelter. Or the shelter becomes so full that they won't let these people in, you know, and then every year we always read about somebody who's under the one of the bridges or who is um, sleeping in a car someplace or at one of the hobo camps, you know, and they freeze to death. Um, so they, these guys are very, very important. Boulder County Cares, they, uh, they don't cost a lot of money, but they, I'll tell you the things they really can use, and you really do save somebody's life when you help with an old sleeping bag that you might have at home, okay, some blankets or socks. But see, you get in a cold night like this, where it's 16 degrees out, you know, you need, um, if you can get a sleeping bag, especially if you've been drinking, if you can climb in that sleeping bag and get it zipped up, you can stay warm for the night. Um, so you can help prevent a life. So if you have an old sleeping bag out there in the garage, uh, that would be a good thing, you know, an extra one that you don't use anymore. Call Boulder County Cares and uh, try to get one, you know, down to them because you probably could save some guy's life. Very important. Um, 
sweaters, coats. Uh, these are for the, our homeless, mentally ill, chronically addicted, mostly males that will not go to the shelter because they just find it too weird to go there. Um, another one, one of my favorites that Josie Heath runs, everybody knows it, Community Foundation. Um, and they give money to a lot of different uh, organizations. They give money to the uh, Boulder County Shelter, Boulder Valley Women's Health Center, excellent place, you know, for, um, well, you know, I mean, they take Christ, the Bush administration cut back on women health services, so uh, they're very, very important. Uh, community food share, very important. Uh, they give money to the community table, but these are also places that you can give money to. Dental aid, uh, let's see here, Longmont's Children Cup, Meals on Wheels, Boulder, um, People's Clinic, Planned Parenthood of the Rockies, um, let's see, UNICEF. UNICEF. Hey, Jen, you worked with UNICEF, huh? What did, what did you do when you worked for them? Uh, helped collect money. Really? Yep. When you were in high school? Uh-huh. Really? So yeah. How, 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 you, how often did you do that? Every Christmas? Or? Um, twice a year. Hmm. So you do volunteer work? Yes. I have, yeah. All right. Have yourself a merry little Christmas. A merry little Christmas. Yeah, while you're sitting home there, cuddle up by the fire nice and warm. And if, you're, if your bank book is next year you know, maybe you might say to your husband, honey, will be you know how much you like it when I give you a blowjob? Well, you have not given any money to charity, and you're not getting any more sex until you give it up to the poor. What? you talking about, bitch? I'll give you this nice house. Yeah, but you have to give something to the poor. Women take charge of the men. And you know how to, there's a one way to do that. Of course, you can just steal the money from them yourself. And maybe some of you women are like that. You know, you're sitting up in these nice houses in the mountains watching the TV show. Take 10 charities, all right? Just go online, look at Community Foundation, and take 10 of these, and write a check for $5 to each one, 50 bucks. That's it. We get 10,000 people to do that. That's a half a million dollars, right, Keith? Yeah. Here's another charity. Uh, let's see. Oh, Salvation Army. Salvation Army is a great charity. 17% of their dollars go to help people, and they do a lot of work. They are always ringing the bell down there by King Supers. Uh, this is Salvation Army has served and delivered thousands of Thanksgiving dinners. They also have a great treatment center for alcoholic men down in Denver and women, and they do a lot of housing. Salvation Army needs volunteers to ring the kettle. They, they do a tremendous amount of work helping people who are situationally homeless um, and helping people get off alcohol and drugs. And they've been going since the 1800s. Their, their primary mission, let's see, what does it say here? Help those in need by making oh, an online do donation. No, no, no. Help a needy child have a Merry Christmas. Wait a minute. No, these people are very good people. And the Salvation Army, Salvation Army along with... Uh, well, anyways, Salvation Army helps people. No, 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 they do. They really do. They're uh, good people. Boulder County Cares, good people. The Community Foundation, um, not bad. CATV, Channel 54, excellent. You lose CATV, you lose the first... You lose your First Amendment in Boulder, you can kiss that goodbye, and you can let the Patriot Act take over. Um, what else is here? Here's Effa Manley. has nothing to do with anything. No, let's kill that one. I don't like that song. I want another traditional Christmas song. What else we got? Another Christmas song. Here we go. What's this? It's beginning to look Yeah. Get out your checkbook. Write a five dollar check. Send it to one of your favorite charities. You'll feel better. God'll like you better. You might stand a chance of getting into heaven. You might die, you might find out that there is one. I mean, what if you were wrong? And there is one. And you get there and you are judged! You are judged! <laughs> What if there is a judgment? You'd be fucked, wouldn't you? 
You know, because deep down inside, Boulder people are not good. You're all a bunch of stingy bastards. Aren't you? Stingy bastards. Stingy, stingy, stingy. What is that? Stingy, stingy. There are a bunch of rich, Boulder rich people are stingy bastards. Get your checkbook out, and the kids go and get mom's checkbook and dad's checkbook, and pick your favorite charities and start writing five dollar checks and so. <laughs> Don't do that. Just steal the cash. And say, I don't no, moms and dads, God damn it, get out of bed, get off that couch, and give some money to these charities. Here's there. some silly ones. Uh, another one is, uh, uh, this is called the um, North American Man Boy Love Association. <laughs> this is the uh, North American. Uh, their freedom is invisible, the liberation of children, women, and homosexuals in general can occur, blah, blah, blah. Uh, these people want to have, um, they sing, they sing here that Harry Potter is gay in Mambla. Mambla wants to have sex with children. There's a charity. Okay, okay, it's a little extreme, but I just thought we'd take just like the whole gay rights thing and put it all in one. All right, stupid. There's also, but if you don't like Mambla, there's also something else, which is called the North American Pot-Bellied Pig Association. You could give money to them and help save pot-bellied pigs. Or Mambla. <laughs> all right. There's the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, or, if you're on the other side of it, the Ku Klux Klan. They're, they're really Christmassy. Uh, who else do we have here? UNICEF. UNICEF. Okay, that's a serious one. Let's go to one of these. That. Oh, all right. How about, if you're a football player, there's the uh, Muslim Football League which has been in the news here recently, right there. It's true, it's right up there. They have a website. The Muslim Football League. The MFL. <laughs> it's like the, the old MFL used to be the Muff Football League, but not anymore. Oh. It's, it's, that, that was a swimming team, diving team, whatever, Muff diving, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they, were, they, were, they were Muff divers. <laughs> no, this is Muslim. Muslim football team, not Muff football le league. Um, according to the, uh, um, no pads, no helmets, no heart. Right. Uh, it was planned as a way to bring young athletes together for a weekend of fun, but when participants in the Muslim football tournament started naming their teams, the Intifada, soldiers of uh, Mujahideen, Jewish leaders, went fucking insane, according to this story. Uh, intifada means uprising in Arabic, as a term applied to suicide bombings and attacks against Israelis in the Middle East. Well, we know that. Mujahideen is, means a holy warrior. I mean, I, I don't know. What about the Indian kids out there in the Eastern Plains? They got so pissed off with having us white people name our football and basketball teams, you know, the Warriors, the Braves. They, they, they called themselves the Fighting Whiteys. Remember that? So I'm like, okay, the Muslim kids have a right to refer to themselves as the uh, soldiers of Allah! <laughs> Okay, as long as they don't like blow something up while they're doing it, you know, like no, you can't have like a suicide bomber run on the field and then the other team and they just kill everybody. We win default, Allah! Right. Uh, a lot of kids on our team are from Palestinian origin. Um, the Inf Intifada's 29-year-old captain and quarterback says, we are in solidarity with the people in uprising <laughs> against the Israelis. <gasps> Woo! All right. And, you know, here in Boulder, of course, most of the lefty commies are pretty much, they're right in there. They're right in with the Intifada. So, all right. It bothers me a little bit, says Khan, a Saddleback college student, said that we're just trying to be cool. Um, all the kids are involved in sincere, they're sincere Muslim kids. So, uh, you know, there it is. They're in solidarity with their Palestinian brothers. Just like the Ku Klux Klan, you know, they 
They, they hear them. They have the little clan movement. Everybody's being white, you know, and keeping the black people out. And then, of course, you've got the NCAA. Okay, good. And the, one of my favorites, the Muslim Football League, MFL. Stole their name from the uh, Mustavers Football League. All right, and then, uh, then Mambla, the Man Boy Love Association. <laughs> Oh, man. And then, then, of course, there's this one here. This is called, um, this is a website. It's called How to, hey, Jen, have you heard of this? How to Love a Geek Girl. Uh, How to Love a Geek Girl. This is the website. Uh, it's drew.com. How to Love a Geek Girl and why you, sh why you shouldn't want one in the first place. Why you should want one in the first place. There's a lot of advice on the net for those who love geek boys, you know, things like when the lights are low, whisper to him in your best uh, Star Trek computer voice, or bring him a cold Coke without asking, or tell him you want to send him a romantic weekend at home, uh, just the two of you playing Doom. <laughs> but precious little has been written about the XX side of the equation, geek girls, and how to love them. Why? Beats me. Well, actually, see, I kind of like geeky girls. One of my best, I, my best girlfriends have always been kind of geek, geeky. Jen, you're geeky, right? Uh, no. <laughs> Come on, you're a brainiac. <laughs> you're like, I'm not you have a like brainiac. A huh? I'm not a brainiac. You are too. You have like a big scholarship, very brainy. Go to three. Mm, I'm not, okay. I'm not dumb. <laughs> no, you are not dumb. How about like, okay, you belch. Yeah. Let's hear a good burp. Oh, I, I need some coke. <laughs> All right. right. Uh -huh. Well, anyways, this is called Drew.com, How to Love a Geek Girl. Uh, uh, there are a few things you should avoid. Don't get cranky when she, asks, when she has to work late. Geek girls are driven by their intellects, and you may occasionally have to take a back seat to the latest release of Pearl. Don't flip out over the occasional antisocial tendencies. <laughs> All right. Anyways, the Muslim football. <laughs> let's hear another. How about let's hear the song from Praviata. Let's hear all of them. Let's start from the beginning. We'll go through each one. Ready? We know what this one is. Meow. I know the intro. Roasting on an fire. Jack Frost. At your, at your nose, toes. Sing along at home. It's okay. Don't be afraid. Yeah. Okay, next song. It's...
White Christmas, I think. Used to know four four zero three five seven two. Christmas. I wonder if we have one with Michael Jackson. All right, enough of Elvis. Yeah. Having fun, Jen? This is compelling television. This is television at its best right here. This is a desperate attempt at getting people to like Well, Steve, the snowman, this is Ella Fitzgerald, huh? Yep. When was this song recorded, Jen? Does it say on it? the snowman. Frosty the Snowman, it's Ella Fitzgerald here on uh, Jan Scott Live on a Thursday night just before Christmas on Channel 54 right here in Boulder. Hmm. What's this? Pavarotti. Holy Night. Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. credits anytime we'll continue playing the music. Isn't this fun? Oh boy. What's this one? Mr. Vandross. Come all ye faithful. Oh no. We're gonna move right on from this. Are we gonna roll them? Yeah. Okay. Let's try another song. The one over there. Yeah. I don't think I like this one. We got another one? It's like a Disney song. We'll see you on next week. Well, Everywhere you go. Remember to get your checkbooks out. Send money to your favorite charity. Listening once again. With candy canes and silver lanes of glow. 